Hello, this is Victor Zaitsev from EnergyPerformanceHub.com. Today we are having tutorial number 9 of the Energy Performance Contract and it is all about automated monitoring and targeting. targeting. IMNT. Also we will talk about the completion and guarantee phase, sometimes called uh, uh, performance assurance phase of the energy performance contract, which is the last third stage of the energy performance contract. Let's get started. Uh, IMNT, Automated Monitoring and Targeting. What's that and, and why do we need it? Well, first of all, um, most of the organizations already have some sort of metering system, which is used probably to build them uh, by the utility companies. So those are metering system and that's how you get built. You consume kilowatt hours of electricity, gas, oil, LPG, you name it, and they just build you for kilowatt hours. Some companies um, did lots of projects uh, in terms of metering. Some had to comply with CRC, carbon reduction commitment, and uh, they had to install uh, metering systems at least for the main fiscal meters so they can collect and report the data. Um, some companies install lots of submeters. Part L2, A of the building regulations, you know, went in, into force uh, uh, and it just encourages people to put meters. Sometimes I, I must admit people overuse the system and sometimes there is a little bit too much of metering, honestly speaking. It, and sometimes it's a bit of waste of money as well. The reason I'm saying this, I mean, I've seen switch rooms like on the floor and they've got like 12 meters for every sub circuit. God knows what it means, honestly. You know, it, 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 it's not, it's not. It, 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 you can't use this data. It's, it's just data overload and, you know, you know what, for instance, small power consumes for this floor. Okay, so you can compare it to the other floor and see you know, how many printers they've got and how many staff or whether they switch staff on and off at night. Yeah, might be. But I mean, imagine doing it for every single floor, for every switch room. That's just too much. At the same time, you've got to have at least every building and major systems on the metering system. You know, if you've got chillers, I suggest you have a chiller. Obviously, you've got heating systems, uh, whether it's gas for instance, but also have the meters on the secondary side, whether it's heat meters, steam meter, it actually helps you to work out efficiencies and what's going on specifically when you've got CHP. Um, also with the lighting circuits, how, how far you can go with electricity, so you can do lighting. Again, the way the systems are wired is very difficult, you don't differentiate between lighting and small power, normally it's the same switch small power and everything is wired from that but there are ways of working out the lighting energy services companies will, will survey the site they will survey existing metering and they will develop your metering strategy even further and they will install meters they will try to do it at the early stages of implementation sometimes they will try to do it early if you place an order with them just to see basically where you are easier for guarantee the reason why you need the metering system is number one, obviously they're making a guarantee of the savings. If you if you don't have metering, how you can measure it? Yeah, you will be getting reports basically. Here's the meter, here's consumption, 15% reductions which we guarantee. We achieve 16. That's it. You know, we've achieved the performance this month. This kind of thing. The second thing is useful just to see you can use it then to negotiate the utility contracts as well, especially in, in ESCOs or subcontractors to energy services company. You can negotiate better, deal, better deals on that. I have seen many ghost IMNT systems and they just, they just never use it. It's just information overload, it's, it's been installed, never used properly and, uh, you know, waste of money. Um, the next thing what we're going to talk is is basically completion. So you've done your implementation projects, you've done your awareness campaign, you've done your training, you've, you've 
commissioned, you validate it, you witness, you sign completion certificate. But before kind of project goes into guarantee phase, normally there is a couple of months, you know, of time before a guarantee starts. That's for time where energy services companies will actually be using those meters to stay them still and seeing if they are performing. Now, listen carefully, very important. Uh, energy services company, if they don't achieve the energy savings, the savings before the guarantee phase starts, they will start investing additional money into your estate. Already good news. Yes? So they will survey additional energy conservation measures. They will invest some stuff. Whatever they come up, they will put additional logging. They will change, you know, they will change the showing tube color 5, which was outside of scope. They will install volt optimization. They will change transformer. If they will come up, they will do some additional lighting, which wasn't in, in the contract. The reason they do this, they invest their money, they invest their profit at this stage, because the project is not performing and they don't want to be paying you for 10 years the difference. Yeah, so that's good news. Massive, massive benefit. If you are risk averse, energy performance contract is for you. Go for it. Now, the next phase is guarantee phase or performance assurance phase. So basically, the third stage. Yeah, the last stage. Normally, it can run for, you know, whatever the contract. Five, ten years. You know, you can stop it. Now, attention. You have to pay for this. A fee. It is an annual fee. It's not that big. It's basically a person full time sitting on your on your project. Basically, uh, I mean, sitting not, not physically in your buildings, but remotely connected to this metering system, having regular meetings with you, who is constantly seeing and monitoring the performance. He looks. I mean, you can say, why do I need this? I mean, I'm not advocating the systems. I'm, I, I, I've just seen so many mistakes where people make by not going into this. They just must be really great. Say, say you've got, you know, half a million guarantee on energy savings, and say, uh, say it costs you ninety thousand for the energy uh, for the past performance assurance per year. If you don't go, many companies sleep badly. Basically, if you say, I don't need the energy performance contract, thanks ESCO, thanks for doing jobs, I, I will manage myself. Obviously, ESCO kind of, you know, business is finished. And then what you see, your energy consumption starts going back. What's the reason of that? The reason is very simple. Because no one is managing your site anymore. You know, you are so busy with your stuff, with your project, no one is managing it. That's why you've got to pay this annual fee for someone to see and look at your meeting. Say you build a new building. Say you demolish something. The baseline will be adjusted, basically, to the project to achieve the savings. Say you install some new scanners. Say you, you, you build uh, your operational parameters changed from, you know, time... It's a call center now, 24-7, that's it. The person will be seen and say, hold on, there's something happening with this building. He will come, he will talk to you on this meeting. What happened with this building? Oh yeah, we've done that. Fine, let's change the baseline. Yes, yeah, so we can see consistency in the energy performance. So very important, have that. Also, another opportunity. As your stage develops, there will be other opportunities to save energy, and that's the person who will be constantly going and policing what has happened. So, for instance, if someone changed BMS, he would go investigate and say, guys, what happened, you know, shouldn't do this, reinforce the message, put settings back. Yes, it's a policing, making sure that the energy performance is achieved. Plus, there will be new opportunities to develop maybe phase two of the project. If you like the ESC or if you love the model, you can develop the project further. Well, let's say it has uh, Victor Zaito from energyperformancehub.com. Thank you very much for listening to this uh, recording. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot from this. Uh, thanks. Now go and implement the project. Bye.